Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, as you can see, we are on my streaming set, but we are not actually streaming. Uh, we won't be doing any live streams for another two and a half months or so. And that's because a group of narcissistic fake MGTOW soy boys who I brought into MGTOW and gave, you know, moderator status because I kind of wanted to help them and bring them into the community, uh, betrayed Howard Dare and the MGTOW community by using their moderator status to attack the channel, shut down the revenue stream, uh, attack the uh, users and subscribers of the channel, and then report me to YouTube until one of my videos got flagged and my live streaming ability got shut down. And the reason why they did this is because they are the true real MGTOW, but they don't produce any content. They're narcissistic boys raised by mothers and they got upset because they weren't the center of attention. So lesson learned, you know, you can't let everybody into MGTOW. So I want to watch this video and I think you'll find it very interesting, very frustrating, and you'll be glad that I'm here. Trust me. So let's check it out and I'll talk about it along the way. Doesn't it seem like some white men are really angry lately? Not all white men. I said some. According to precarious man theory, when men don't feel masculine, they tend to act out in stereotypical gendered ways, which is why you're getting pushback from the men in your life for just existing. But it's not you. It's white men. They're a little fragile right now. Here's why. Oh, I don't think we really care why anymore. Yeah, that was pretty ugly. Go ahead and plug any group uh, into, you know, her white men, and you'll see that it doesn't work. How did you like those soy boys sticking their head in there? Not all white men. Um, well, she's very tolerant, you know, that she basically just dismissed them. Precarious man theory. Hmm. Well, that sounds really interesting. Uh, so when their masculinity is threatened, she's suggesting they tend to act out in stereotypical ways. Hmm. I would say we could call that precarious anyone theory, couldn't we? When, you know, they're threatened, they tend to act out in stereotypical ways. Precarious dog theory. Okay, let's uh, continue. And notice what she did there, how she suggests that any sort of problems that you're having in your life with white men is because they're feeling insecure about their masculinity. So this is another technique that you guys need to be aware of, that, you know, everything gets tied back to their um, reason for being oppressed. In other words, the reason why you're not giving me a raise is because you like to oppress women. It's like, no, the reason I'm not giving you a raise is because you don't do good work. So let's continue. Men used to be able to raise a family, buy a house, and retire on one salary. Yes, you know, they used to be able to do that. Um, other men were able to do that. Other productive people were able to do that as well. It wasn't limited to just white men, but it did require that a person actually work. Okay, let's continue. Their own. But thanks to growing income inequality, that's something white men can't do anymore. And that's throwing off some really comfy gender norms. You know what else white men can't do anymore? Afford to keep a full-time spouse at home have job security, depend on federal mortgage programs to help them buy a house, and rely on subsidized high-quality health care, subsidized retirement programs, and social security. Wow. Full-time spouse, huh? Can't afford to keep a full-time spouse. That's an interesting way of putting it. Uh, maybe women will be able to afford to keep a full-time spouse. Job security. Nobody ever had job security. Mortgage programs. Well, there's plenty of mortgage programs for... Uh, the oppressed people. Healthcare. Yeah, from what I understand, it's called Obamacare now. Um, retirement programs. Hmm. Yeah, some people retire for the summer. Social Security. Hmm. Yeah, well, from what I understand, it still exists. Let's continue. These entitlement programs were part of the privilege of being a white man. Oh, oh, privilege of being a white man. Interesting. These social programs, huh? I wonder what programs like Affirmative Action and Title IX, I wonder how they're, you know, part of being a white man, too. Oh, yeah, because white men, okay, I understand. Let's continue. And it must be enraging to watch them slowly slip away at the hands of growing income inequality. But you know who else is angry? Women and people who aren't white. See, we've been excluded from these programs for longer than we've been included in them. Actually, these programs were invented for you guys so that you would stop complaining, but it didn't really work uh, because, you know, it wasn't really a problem. It was 
wanting to complain and use that, you know, to lord over other people. Gee, I wonder if that's what's going on here. Please continue. We're really mad about it too. So I say welcome, white men. You've officially joined the fucked over club. You can now join the ranks of most of the United States. We get that you're angry, and while it's not our fault, we can totally empathize with your law. Yeah, I, I don't think that she's empathizing or sympathizing with anybody about now, and I think that she's actually very happy about the situation as it's going on right now, and she's actually trying to justify it as normal, regular behavior, and it's not. It is pretty much the end of Western civilization. And I think anybody with half a brain knows that, and I think anybody with any sort of, you know, moral compass is, you know, shocked and horrified by it. But she seems to be having a pretty good time, so let's continue. Of privileges, even though we've never had them. But don't listen to me, an angry lesbian. Let a white man tell you the exact same thing. Well, what a smile, right? And, you know, and from such an angry lesbian, too. Um, this is great. She's going to bring a white man in. Let's see how this works out. Once upon a time, we had 98%. Okay, you don't start out a story talking to men with once upon a time. That's that's for kids and that's for women and, uh, yeah, fantasy. And this is an old liver-spotted man who really looks kind of sick and old. I mean, he does not look, look, he's not a man, okay? Maybe he once was a man, but he's not a man anymore. And uh, I think that's why they put him up there. Continuing on of all of the positions of power. And now we only have like 88%. And we think, oh my God, women are taking over. This is Dr. Michael Kimmel. He's one of the world's leading experts on men and masculinity. One of the world's leading experts on men and masculinities? What the hell is masculinities? It sounds like minorities, but you know, as applied towards men, I think that's what it is. So they had to make up a field so that they could say that he's one of the world's leading experts. I wonder if he's here on YouTube. I wonder if he would come on here to a Howard Dare podcast. Oh, we don't get to do podcasts because we hurt feelings. Okay, continuing on time the whole world was a locker room the boardroom of the company was a locker room the operating theater in the hospital was a locker okay again with the once upon a time again men don't talk about the locker room the boardroom was not a locker room the operating theater of the hospital was never a locker room it was always a place based on merit and ability and uh i wonder hopefully you know it will continue to be that and i wonder why Someone you know, would suggest that it was anything other than that, right? So they're suggesting that, you know, the reason why that men get ahead and become, you know, capable within a society is because it's a locker room. And that's not the reason why. It's because of achievement and competition. So for anybody to suggest otherwise, it would be because they want to circumnavigate that competition and those requirements. Let's continue firm was a locker room the military was a locker room the locker room was a locker room everywhere you went it was all guys but now women have entered every single one of those arenas the change in our lives has taken place so bewilderingly fast that so many men feel like what happened and now you're getting all the advantages women are getting everything the guys who are the angriest are the ones who said I made a bargain with this society, and it was the same bargain my father made and my grandfather made. I will be a good man. I will be a good husband. I will be a good father. I will work really hard. I will pay my taxes. And in return for that, I should be able to support a family by myself and buy my own house in which to raise my children. And what's happened, of course, economically, is that is very unlikely these days. Because you're angry right now, white men, it doesn't mean that women... Don't you hate it when somebody who's part of a group refers to the group as if they're not part of the group, right? Because they're like, like they have some sort of special status or something when they're really just a Benedict Arnold, you know what I mean? And they're like proud of it. I find that really, you know, to be disgusting. Let's continue. A V8 moment where they go, oh my God, you know... Look at the fat, angry lesbian smiling right there. You know why? Because she doesn't drink V8. She hates V8. She never drinks V8. So she's, she's smiling. What they were right. Let's stop working. Yeah, Let's see, even the skinny one knows it. She rolled her eyes there at the end. Like, ah, this one here never drinks V8. Let's continue. 
stop voting, let's stop driving cars, let's stop serving on juries, let's stop having orgasms. It's just not worth it. Okay, yeah, there's a great, you know, dinner conversational topic, female orgasms. So you know that you're dealing with a kind of strange, weird man when he starts talking about things like this. Because men don't talk about things like that. Um, you would just, you, you, you would not bring it up, you know, at the boardroom, at the, the dinner table, at the job interview. You just wouldn't. Um, a woman might, a child might, a sycophant might, you know, somebody trying to please women, but, uh, no, a man, a man certainly wouldn't, wouldn't be talking about, you know, female orgasms, uh, you know, but the oppression knows no bounds, right? <clears throat> We've oppressed them now at that level too. So let's continue. It's not going to happen. It's a done deal. So we men have a choice. We can be dragged kicking and screaming into the future, or we can say, hmm, this is a completely different world. What's in it for us? What's in it for white men? What's in it for white men? All of the available evidence suggests that the more gender equal our relationships are, the better our health, the better our relationships with our partners, spouses, and friends, the better our children do in school, the happier countries are, the better corporations do. Okay, except for that last part about the corporations, that was all completely false. The more equal our gender relations, we are not healthier for that. Quite the opposite. Men should be fulfilling a male role. Women should be fulfilling you know, a female role. And that's when people are the happiest and the healthiest. Uh, it's the same thing with children. They are happiest in a stable, you know, male, female uh, family. Um, amazing, right? The things that people will say just to be like, you know, win people's approval in the moment. Continuing on. This is a win-win all the way around. We have come to this idea that gender equality is a zero-sum game. And if women win, men are going to lose. The reality is when women win, men win as well. Wrong. When women win, men lose. That is how they play the game. They don't even see it as women winning. They, they're they perfectly happy to just see men lose, right? Like, you know, women are not being raised up. Men are being torn down. You know, that's what we're experiencing, largely. So when men win, women win, and society, civilization wins, that's the truth of it. And that's what has built Western civilization. And now you're tearing, you know, these kind of attitudes, these kind of, you know, liberal, leftist, globalist, corporate attitudes are tearing it down. And I really don't see how that's debatable, right? I mean, look at look at what's happening, you know, to Europe. Uh, it's undeniable. So this is feminist propaganda. This is performance art. This is trying to take the extreme position, the extreme toxic destructive, hostile position towards men and present it as normal, as a social norm. And it's not. And you get these really weak examples of men and, you know, you, you put them on, you know, the set and, you know, you pretend like, oh, th this is what all men are like. That's not what all men are like. Let's continue. So that's why white men are so angry. Their position in society is changing fast, and they've never... This is similar to what she did, you know, at the beginning when she said this is the reason why, you know, you're getting pushback in your life from the men, right? Because their uh, stereotypical gender roles are being threatened. So, no. The answer to everything is not, you know, why uh, men are being given a hard time. Let's just continue. It's it's very confusing. It really is. You know, like she's being very, she's trying to be very crafty, and she is. So, let's continue. Never had a chance to reevaluate it. It must suck to have your previously very stable identity feel so fragile. But does this mean we let white male fragility and anger hold us hostage? Nope. It means we continue to challenge men on their behavior, support masculinity that doesn't benefit from putting others down. I wonder what that means. Support masculinity that doesn't benefit from putting others down. Hmm. I sure hope that's not a subtle way of saying, you know, let's get rid of um, equality of opportunity and replace it with equality of outcome. Right. Like the idea of like somebody not getting equality of outcome is putting them down. Right. It's like, why don't I make as much money as him? And it's like, well, because he's really competent and he works really hard and um, he's really good at what you know he does. And uh, you suck. And you need a whole lot of help and uh, government assistance. So, 
You're not going to get what he gets. It's like, well, that's unfair. <laughs> Let's continue. And encourage men to support each other, but not before we welcome them to the pissed off party. So the next time you see an angry white guy, say, welcome, welcome to, to the, the club. club. You totally understand how hard it is to lose rights and privileges most people never had. And while you didn't take these things from him, you're totally... Wow. Amazing, you know? Yeah, it's an attack on, you know, basic human rights. And, uh, of course, these other people have had these rights. So, I hope you see, I hope you see what they're trying to do because they're going to do it with you. So, this is a fair warning. ...for being angry together to make sure everyone benefits this next time around. Okay, wow. Amazing. You know? Uh, what a what a what a little video there. Now you can check her out over on um Facebook. And uh, there, there's more videos. <laughs> there's more. There's more. Yeah, this stuff goes over very, very well. Um I definitely think that in light of something like this, men need uh content. They need media that supports a masculine worldview because there's no place in this woman's world for uh, men with any sort of dignity, you know, because any sort of dignity they have is part of their privilege. So, again, try to understand what this really is. You know, it's performance art. It is propaganda. It is an attempt to take the most toxic aspects of feminism and present them as social norms. And it works, you know, it, it works very, very well. Uh, this is why even critiquing this type of con uh, media and content, it's, it's difficult, it's dangerous, because their message gets put out through the whole situation. But you need to be aware of how the message is undermining uh, the rights, you know, of men in society and just go ahead and plug any other you know social group racial group ethnic group into when she's saying white men and you know you'll see you'll see it's very toxic it's very poisonous it, it's uh it's hate speech right it definitely is um and it's presenting it in this kind of uh conversational funny witty manner you know like uh i'm gonna win this argument because i'm only uh talking about it from a very limited point of view. Uh, so, very narcissistic worldview, very self-serving kind of worldview. So, I'm very curious what you guys think about this. You know, I find it to be very upsetting, and I know that it, it's, you know, commonplace. This is what most of your media is. So, let me know what you think about it, not just what you think about, you know, this individual piece of media, but this practice of presenting, you know, this these hostile social uh, propaganda uh, worldviews as normal behavior and understand why, you know, this is happening, right? Because it has to do with being part of a collective group and it does benefit corporations to undermine, you know, the strength of men and their ability to build families. That's exactly what's going on and for people to be individuals. So let me know what you think about that situation as well. And please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate. You know, and join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.